In this Blender video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this animation of liquid that hardens and then crumbles. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.83. We'll start by deleting the cube. Now we'll make the source of the liquid, so press Shift A and add a mesh sphere. Then reduce it in size by pressing S, then 0.25, then Enter. We're going to be setting up the liquid simulation using Quick Effects, but before we do this, save your project. The reason for this is because Blender is going to save some cache files for the simulation, and by saving your project first, Blender will know the location of your project, and therefore it will be able to save the cache files at the same location. Next, from the Object menu, select Quick Effects, and then Quick Liquid. This sets up a liquid simulation for us using the sphere as the liquid source. You'll notice that it also puts us in wireframe view. The cuboid that was added is called the liquid domain and it will contain all of the fluid. Let's resize it. So press N to open the sidebar. Then set the X and Y dimensions to 6. And the Z dimension to 3. Then press N again to close the sidebar. Now we'll set up some of the details for the liquid simulation. So select the sphere and then switch to the physics tab. Change the flow behavior setting to inflow. This will allow the liquid to flow into the liquid domain using the sphere as its source. We're only going to let the liquid flow in for the first 50 frames and then we're going to shut it off. To do that, set the frame number to 50. Then make sure there is a check mark next to use flow and then right click it and select insert keyframe. Now set the frame number to 51, remove the check mark, right click and select insert keyframe. Now when the animation reaches frame 51, no more liquid will be added. Next, select the liquid domain. Currently the resolution divisions is set to 32. I'm going to increase it to 64 to increase the resolution of the liquid. For this animation, we're going to set up the speed of the liquid so that it will flow normally for the first 50 frames and then slow down and stop during the next 40 frames. We can control the speed of the liquid by using the time scale value. For the initial speed of the liquid, set the time scale to 0.5. Now set the frame number to 50. Then right click the time scale value and select insert keyframe. Next, set the frame number to 90. Then set the time scale to 0, right click it, and select Insert Keyframe. Now the liquid will flow normally for the first 50 frames, and then slow down and stop between frames 50 and 90. Frame 90 will be the end of the fluid animation, so set the end value to 90. During this video, we're actually going to be making two animations. The first animation will be the liquid flowing and then hardening. The second animation will be the hardened liquid crumbling. Then we'll combine the two into a single animation. Next, scroll down and add a check mark next to Mesh, which will make the fluid a mesh. Now go to the Cache section and set the frame end value to 90. This sets the last frame of the liquid simulation. Everything is set up for the simulation and we're ready to bake it. So set the type to Final and click the Bake All button. I'll pause the video until it's done. It's done baking now. If you need to make changes after baking, then click the free all button, make your changes, and then bake it again. To see what this looks like, I'll switch to solid view, go to frame one, and then click the play button. Next, let's add a floor for it to sit on. So press Shift A and add a mesh plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 5, then Enter. Next we'll move it into position. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then move it on the Z axis by pressing G, then Z, then drag it to the bottom of the liquid and left click. Now we'll add a cylinder that's intended to look like it's the source of the water, but it won't actually do anything. So press Shift A and add a mesh cylinder. Then scale it by pressing S, 
then point 0.4, then enter. Then scale it on the z-axis by pressing S, then Z, then 5, then enter. Now move it on the z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then 1.5, then enter. Next, smooth it out by right-clicking and select Shade Smooth. After the liquid stops flowing at frame 50, we're going to move the cylinder out of the way. So move to frame 50, then press I and select Location. Now move to frame 70. Then move the cylinder up on the z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then 4, then Enter. Now press I and select Location. Let's also move the sphere out of the way. So select the sphere and move back to frame 50. Then press I and select Location. Now move to frame 70. Then move the sphere up by pressing G, then Z, then 4, then Enter. Now press I and select Location. This is what it looks like now when I play it. After reaching frame 50, the cylinder and the sphere move up out of the way. Next we'll set up the lighting and then we'll set up the materials. So find the light in the outliner and select it. Then switch to the Object Data tab. Keep the point lamp selected, change the power to 5000, and then set the radius to 3. Now I'll switch to Rendered View to see what this looks like. This is currently used in the EV Render Engine, and so I'm going to switch to the Render tab and change the Render Engine to Cycles. If you have a supported GPU device, then you can select GPU Compute, which can speed up rendering. The material that the liquid is currently using is a glass material. We're going to change it to use the principled shader. So select the liquid and switch to the Material tab. Then for the surface type, select Principled BSDF. Then change the base color to a hex value of 404040. Now set the roughness value to 0 if it's not 0 already. Now select the floor and click the New button. Set the base color to a hex value of E74800. Next, select the cylinder and click the New button. Change the metallic value to 1. Next, we'll set the background color, so switch to the World tab and set the color to black. Now we'll set up the camera view, so press 0 on the number pad for camera view. I'm going to zoom in a little. Now press N to open the sidebar, switch to the View tab, and add a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the sidebar. Next, I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. We're almost ready to render the first part of the animation. There's just a few more things that we need to do. So switch to the Render tab and set the number of render samples. I'm going to use 32. Now switch to the Output tab. In the Output section, click this button and select the directory where you want the animation file to be saved. For the file format, I'm going to select FFmpeg Video. If you would like more details about how to render an animation, then you can watch my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. We're all set to render the animation, so this is a good time to save the project. To render the animation, go to the Render menu and select Render Animation. I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished. This is the directory where I saved the animation file, and this is what the animation looks like. I'm going to change the file name to Liquid, but I'm not changing the file extension. Now we're ready to make the second animation where the hardened liquid will crumble into pieces. So start by saving this project using a different file name. That way, we'll keep a copy of what we've done so far. This animation is going to start where the last one left off. So go to the last frame. We're going to get rid of the liquid simulation so that we're just left with this mesh object. To do that, select the liquid domain object, switch to the modifier tab, and apply the fluid modifier. Now switch to the particle tab, select the liquid particle system, and delete it. 
Also select the two keyframes if they're not already selected and press X to delete them. Now go to frame 1 and you'll see that the mesh doesn't change. For this animation we don't need the cylinder or the sphere, so select the cylinder and delete it. Then select the sphere and delete it. We're currently using this gray material for the liquid. When we break apart this mesh into pieces, we'll end up with new mesh faces where the pieces break apart from each other. We can use a different material for these new faces. To do this, we need to add a second material to this object. So select the liquid object, switch to the material tab, and add a second material. Then select the liquid domain material. Now click the new material button to make this a copy. That way, the changes that we make to this new material will not affect the original material. We'll make changes to this new material later. We just needed to add it now before we break the mesh apart. I'm going to switch to solid view now. Next, we're going to enable an add-on. So from the edit menu, select preferences. Then click on the add-on section. In the search box, type cell. Now add a check mark next to Object Cell Fracture to enable it. To use this add-on, select the liquid, and then from the Object menu, select Quick Effects, and then Cell Fracture. In the Mesh Data section, change the material to 1. This will allow us to use the second material that we just recently added. I'm going to use all of the other default values. Now click the OK button. You'll see some changes happen quickly, and you might think that it's done, but you can tell from my cursor that it's still working. So I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The cell fracture is done now. We're going to keep all of these new objects selected while we make one of them the active object. So hold down the shift key while left clicking one of the objects. Next we're going to turn these into rigid body objects. So switch to the physics tab and click the rigid body button. This makes the active object a rigid body. If I click play, you can see that only the active object falls. To copy the rigid body settings to the other selected objects, go to the object menu and select rigid body and then copy from active. Now when I click play, you can see all of the selected pieces fall. You'll notice here that our original mesh is still present. We don't need it anymore, so select it and delete it. Here's what it looks like now when I press play. To prevent the pieces from falling through the floor, select the floor and click the rigid body button. Then set the type to passive. Now when I click the play button, you can see the pieces fall on the floor. Next we'll set the material for the faces that broke apart from each other. So switch to the shading workspace. Now I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see the changes as we make them. Next, select one of the pieces and switch to the material tab. Then select the second material that we added. Next, delete the volume absorption node. We're going to add some texture to it. So press Shift A and select Vector and then Displacement. Connect the Displacement Output to the Displacement Input. Then press Shift A again and select Texture and then Noise Texture. Connect the Factor Output to the Height Input. Now set the Noise Texture Detail to 20. This gives the faces where the pieces broke apart a rough looking texture. To make it more noticeable, we'll lighten up the color. So change the base color to 707070. Then change the roughness to 0 0.5. Now switch back to the layout workspace. This animation is going to be 110 frames long, so set the end frame value to 110. Next, set the frame number to 1. Then click the play button and let it play until it reaches the end and starts over again. You'll see that we now have a line across the bottom of the timeline which indicates that all of the frames have been loaded into the cache. Now we're ready to render the animation, so I'm going to save the project first. 
Then from the Render menu, select Render Animation. I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished. This is what the rendered animation looks like. I'm going to change the name of the rendered file to Solid. Now we can use Blender to combine our two rendered animations. I'll start by saving the project using a different file name. I'll name this one Combined. Next, from the Editor Type drop-down menu, select Video Sequencer. Then move to Frame 1. Now press Shift-A and select Movie. Now I'll left-click the liquid animation and control left click the solid animation to add it to the selection. Then click the Add Movie Strip button. The liquid animation should be first, followed by the solid animation. If they're in the wrong order, you can drag them around to fix it. Our first animation is 90 frames long, the second one is 110 frames, so combined they're 200 frames long. So set the end frame value to 200. Now switch to the Output tab and open the Post Processing section. Verify that there is a check mark next to Sequencer. This tells Blender to use our two movie files when we render the animation again. I'm going to save the project now. Next, from the Render menu, select Render Animation. This should render quickly. I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is done. This is the final animation. I'm going to rename it Combined. This is what the final animation looks like. It starts off as a liquid, and then hardens, and then crumbles. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.